In 2018, the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC in the US, auctioned off part of their radio spectrum, or a bunch of frequencies, to telecommunications companies for use on the 5G network. What's that got to do with weather? Andrew Friedman at the Washington Post has been following this story from the start. So the background really is that scientists have figured out that 5G equipment uh, that telecommunications companies want to deploy, particularly in cities, uh, may actually interfere with signals that are bouncing out of satellites in space into the Earth's atmosphere and back to sense uh, a very important component uh, for making weather forecasts. So let's try and explain the problem. And bear in mind, I am a scientist, not an artist, so bear with me, OK? So what weather satellites are looking for when they monitor the atmosphere is microwave transmissions. And they're coming from things like clouds, from snow, from rain, from water vapour as well. Very faint microwave signals at very precise frequencies. So, for example, here's a little water vapour molecule. It's vibrating away at 23.8 gigahertz. Right next to that frequency, is 24 gigahertz, which is one of the ones that's been auctioned off for use in 5G. Now, you can't just ask that little molecule to tune out of the way. And that's the fundamental problem. That's why weather scientists are really worried. Looks like they're about to get some rather noisy neighbors. If they're broadcasting loudly in the house next door, or in our case, in the frequency band next door, even if what they're leaking is quite a small amount of their power, it can still be much larger than what we're trying to measure. We're going to be in a very difficult world where you know, we're not necessarily sure what we're measuring anymore. Are we measuring interference? Are we measuring the signal? That's, that's the worst fear. The complex weather models used in today's forecasts need satellite data on a global scale. A storm now hitting Europe might have started life days earlier in North America. The World Meteorological Organization in Geneva, Switzerland, organizes that exchange of data, and they're worried a reduction in quality could have real-life consequences, consequences that could have been avoided. If we don't have this specific measurement, in fact, we will lose three to six hours to inform population of the risk of a special events, meteorological special events, like floods, flash floods, or storms, or things like that. So the scientists are really worried. The US regulators don't seem to think there's that much of an issue, while one representative of the telecoms companies has actually called the scientists' fears absurd. The telecom companies have aggressively pushed back at the scientific agencies and said, we don't think that your analyses are correct. We actually think that this is something that uh, isn't such a big deal and that even if it's a big deal, we can solve this some other way. Although the science community has said they're not against 5G because the benefits are clear, they've tried to engage with the telecom companies about potential interference, so far without much response. I know that there is one company um, that, that really could benefit a great deal from 5G because they promote weather apps. Of course, weather companies want 5G. But the thing is, is that they are opposed to this issue because they're like, well, what's the use of having a new, faster app if we have inaccurate information? 5G is coming and it'll no doubt bring lots of benefits. But we're living in a time of rapidly changing climate where severe weather is becoming more frequent and more dangerous. We need to be able to predict and warn of these events. It's never been more important. <laughs>